Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to make this exact scene right in front of you. We are going to be mainly focusing on making an extremely nice and chaotic scene, which is a bit different than the usual art viz that we typically do. This is going to be most interesting for people that are interested in creating concept art as well as nice environments for their portfolio, Instagram, or want to create their own short film. As always, all of the necessary assets are linked down below and follow along. We are starting with a photo scan provided from a very kind person from SketchUp. The geometry is okay enough. It's good, to be honest, for a photo scan and the textures are amazing to give us enough fidelity and enough details that we don't have to worry about modeling this ourselves. Go ahead and import it as an OBJ file and plug in the textures that come with the folder. You will get a diffuse map as well as a normal map. Let's set the roughness to 0 0.8 and let's set the specular to something smaller like 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. We don't want it to be extremely shiny. Next thing is we are going to be adding a landscape and instead of using a plane and sculpting it, are going to be using the regular add-on which comes in by default with Blender. In terms of scaling this up, you can up the mesh size, but I don't like the way this gives us as it kind of tiles in the noises that it layers to give us a result that looks way too noisy and way too small in terms of frequency. So we are going to keep it at 20 and we are going to be Go into edit mode, scaling it up by 10 times. So the scale of our plane is going to be 200 meters by 200 meters. We can scale it up on the z-axis. Make sure to go ahead in edit mode and do that. So your scale doesn't get ruined. Let's add a camera. Let's set the focal length to 28 millimeters. And Let's go ahead and position it until it makes sense, around 1.5 meters, which is roughly slightly lower than the average height of an eye view. Use the Shift Y in order to shift the view upwards instead of rotating on the x-axis. That way you are going to be avoiding any form of unwanted distorted horizontals and verticals as well. Position your house or your cabin model, you know, you don't have to use this specific one, you can use whatever model you have access to, a scan, maybe you can even make it yourself. This is just to kind of showcase an extremely bulletproof and easy workflow that is going to help you immensely. Now what we want to do is go ahead and shape up our actual plain landscape that we added using sculpt mode in order to make it integrate well with our house. It is easier to change the actual plane and sculpt on it rather than change the shape of our photo scans house. Go ahead and sculpt some hills, use proportion editing if you are not too comfortable with sculpting tools. And for the texture, I am literally going to be using a brown color, dark brown color that isn't too saturated, setting the roughness way too large and the specular way too low. We don't want it to be shiny. You might say, why well, aren't you using a proper PBR material? I'm going to answer you, I really don't have to. What's the point when we are going to be hiding all of this with the actual leaves and plants and ferns as well as trees? It is a good practice to keep real material under, but in this case, trust me, I did not need it. You may not need it, but if you want, you can go ahead and add it. Now it's time for our lighting. In this case, we're not using a sky texture. We are going to use an environment texture. As always, linked down below. Go ahead and import it. You can find it for free on Polyhaven. It's called Cypher Fontaine 1D Clear. Go ahead and download it as a 4K or as an 8K map. In this case, we don't need any sort of details or we don't have any clouds in particular. So we don't need too much resolution for k is more than enough. Rotate it until it makes sense. And to avoid the yellowish ugly color, make sure to be using AGX instead of Filmic. 
which handles sunset and sunrise lighting setups way better. At this point, it's time to add our biomes and trees. You can use the geoscatter add-on, which is what I'm using here. It saves up plenty of time and it comes with nice third-party biomes, which you can purchase. I am using this case for a station as well as the Evermotion anniversary, 15th anniversary biome packs. Now, I have added some trees, but I want to specify where they grow. So I'm going to create a vertex map, or vertex weight map. Go ahead and specify where I want them to be and use the column, the column masks or column maps and specify the group that I have added under vertex group. Now this process will require a bit of going over, going back and forth in rendered view, of course in order to get a nice distribution of where you want your trees to be. Now, when adding your trees, make sure that it doesn't obscure your lighting as much. I still want the house to be mostly illuminated, right? And adding trees in front of the house will remove that option. Now, another tip is to go to edit mode and scale your plane before adding a heavy biome. The Evermotion biomes are extremely realistic. Definitely my favorite biomes out there. Ironically, they cost the least, around $5 for six biomes, I believe. Go ahead and add them. Apply the regular optimization, which is display as proxy and com optimization. Make sure to boost the FOV on the Y and the X. Go ahead and do this for all of your actual geometry and biome layers except the trees as well as the young trees since we still want them under uh, behind the camera excuse me behind the camera now scale it up by 10 times we scaled it previously 0 0.1 now we're going to scale it by 10 times that way it comes back to how it was previously without us having to redo everything because Blender would typically crash if you scatter a large amount of objects onto a large amount of land area, right? Mostly because these biomes use the distribution by meters, not by actual count. Now we are creating a second group, which is going to be for our ever motion back biomes for these specific trees, these large trees specifically. For the smaller trees or young trees, we are going to create a third one even. Go ahead and apply that. And make sure to flip the vertex group. As you could see, I'm just going back and forth between rendered mode and kind of adjusting this on the go until I get something that I really like. Don't be afraid to spend some time I'm working on the actual seed and on the actual density per meter. This process does take a bit of time, especially when the scene is extremely heavy, like this one. My device is an RTX 4070 and a Ryzen 7 5700X with 64 gigabytes of RAM, and it still lags every now and then. Go ahead and invest some time doing this the whole scene took me around 35 minutes to make from scratch if you give it two hours maybe add some mega scans as it's later on it's going to be absolutely amazing and even better than what i have made as you can see i'm just going back and forth visualizing this in edit mode visualizing this inside of weight paint mode and most importantly, seeing how this is going to be rendered since the viewport uses bounding boxes for the sake of optimization. Now the, the section is sped up by seven times, right? So it's not this responsive in reality, which is why you see a bit of lag. Now it's time to add our fog. How are we going to do that? We are going to be adding a cube, scaling it up accordingly until it fits 
all of our scene and pushing it a bit in front of the camera. Now that we have our geometry, we are going to the shader editor and add in a principled volume BSDF. Delete your principal shader BSDF. Add your principal volume. Send the anisotropy to 0 0.8, the density to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, or 0 0.025, depending on how much fog you want. Now, this doesn't look right. It looks way too dark, way too dusty. What we want it to look like is a bit lighter, which is why we are going to set the color to white and the fog color or volume color and go to our render properties under light paths and let's give the volume one up to two. Now keep in mind this is going to up your render times by a bit, not too much hopefully, but it's quite significant enough, maybe up to 20% even. For a single frame, that's fine, but for a full on animation, that's going to rack up those numbers way too much. Just keep that in mind. One is more than enough, two is okay, but three, it gets way too much and it starts hurting the look of our scene. Now, I want to add a spotlight to highlight some trees behind. I'm going to give it an extremely large power level. And the key here is to use a larger size so our actual highlights and shadows are quite shallow. We don't want it to look like a burned hotspot on our scene. So make sure to position it well enough. And let's set the color to something more bluish. I'd like to use the temperature setup here. You can experiment with the look profiles inside of the color management, but I highly recommend that you do that inside of Photoshop. After doing so, you can go ahead and add some depth of field. Use, for example, your shack or barn as the target and set the focal length to 8. At the f-stop, excuse me, set the f-stop to 8. Don't keep it at 2.8 since it's going to look like a miniature, more or less. This isn't microphotography, this is a camera that is supposed to take in a full environment. Now, as you could see at this point, we have an extremely nice scene. Now, how can this be taken to the next level? Well, the first thing is some post-production. Add in some bloom, which is I'm going to be doing so using the camera post effects add-on called Photographer 5. It takes the regular compositor, node compositor that Blender comes in with natively, and it turns it into a nice layer-based like visual UI which is going to save up a bit of time and gives you some nice options and presets without you having to actually add any of the actual nodes which is extremely convenient extremely nice as well I'm playing with the streaks playing with the threshold playing with the bloom and the threshold of the bloom as well feel free to do this inside of Blender mostly for the bloom and streaks and do the rest inside of Lightroom or Photoshop, which is going to be the smarter option. Now go back to the light paths and set the transparent to 500. Don't worry, for this one it's not going to be adding any render time, but it's just going to let you avoid any form of dark halo effect near objects in which it, that had materials that use opacity maps. So at this point, our scene is finished. You can go ahead and invest some more time by adding, for example, a destroyed pickup truck, maybe some overrun ruins to the side, maybe some more rocks, maybe some hand placed vegetation, maybe some flowers, maybe even a human being, right? This is most up to you and feel free if you have followed this video till the end and have decided to make it. Send me a result and I will make sure to showcase them on my Instagram. So until next time, take care and enjoy yourself.